Okay, for this video, we're going to talk about something uh, referred to as literal, <clears throat> literal equations. And literal equations are essentially just uh, equations that have two or more variables in them so that we can then substitute uh, something in place of the variables. <coughs> but the purpose of this is to show you how to rewrite equations and formulas. Uh, let's start with uh, something simple like, uh, uh, let's say, a x plus b equals c, and we want to solve for x. When we say solve for x, we want to have x equals by itself and everything else on the opposite side. <coughs> So we're going to go ahead and put a box around the x, and then we're going to look on both sides of the equation and find out if there's any other terms that have an x in them. If there are, we want to bring them all to one side. But once they're all on one side, then we treat it like a normal multi-step equation. So we're going to get rid of the plus b first, so we're going to minus b from both sides. I'm going to show this out to the side. This becomes 0, leaving a times x equal to C minus B. Now I still want my X by itself, so I have to get rid of my times A. So I'm going to divide by A on this side, and I'm going to divide A on this side. A over A gives us 1, and we are now left with X equal to C minus B all over A. And just like a formula, I can then go and substitute in values for C, B, and A and do a subtraction and a division and calculate the value of x. <clears throat> uh, that's just one simple one. Let's try another one. Uh, let's suppose we have um, a minus bx equals c. a minus bx equals c and we're still going to solve for x. So put a box around this. There's no other x's involved, so I need to start eliminating things away from x. But anything that's part of x is one term so goes last. So this b will actually go last. So we have to get rid of the a. This is a positive a, so I'm going to do a minus a to get that to cancel out. And I'm going to do a minus a on this side. This becomes 0. I still have a negative bx left over. And the way we undo this uh, negative b times x is to divide by negative b on both sides. <clears throat> now, this will become positive 1, or x. This negative b on the bottom is actually like uh, b times negative 1. So if I were to go through and multiply this top one by negative 1, that would change this b on the bottom to a positive b. And then I would distribute my negative inside because I don't want the negative down in the denominator. And then this uh, top number would become negative c plus a. And technically, we could just leave it like that. But to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to rewrite that as a minus c over b. So the only thing we did here differently was when we got rid of this negative b, <clears throat> what we should have done was uh, divided by b and then got rid of the negative separately. So we times both sides by a negative 1 uh, because we don't like to have negative stuck down in the denominator. This answer here would be equivalent to this answer here. And on a test or a quiz, they would both be acceptable. Uh, we do not, however, want our negative uh, left down in the denominator. <clears throat> uh, for our next one, it's a little more challenging. We're going to have AX is equal to BX and what is that? A plus C. Okay, as you can see right now, we have two X's in two different locations. What we should do is bring them all to one side. 
Uh, since A comes before B alphabetically, I'm going to move the B over towards the A. And the way I'm going to get it over there is to subtract BX from both sides. So I will have an AX minus BX equal to C. So all we did was minus BX from both sides. <clears throat> now these are not considered like terms. Yes, they both have an X, but they also have an A here and a B there, so they are not officially like terms. And since they're located in two different uh, places, we have to figure out how to get them out into one location. Now you have to think back to how you distribute. Distributing means you're going to take something on the outside of parentheses, something out here, and multiply it through. Well, if I put a little time symbol between my AX and my BX, it looks like I had an X distributed to both my A and my B. So to, what we're going to do is think of undistributing. And undistributing is kind of like dividing. Since distributing is multiplication, undistributing is a form of division. We refer to that as factoring. So what these two uh, numbers have in, in common, what these two terms have in common is an X. So we're going to factor or divide an x out of both. So if I'm going to divide this by an x, and I'm going to divide this by an x, and bring the x on the outside, so instead of having an x in two places, I have it out here in one place. Well, ax divided by x, that becomes a 1. That leaves us with just a. Bring down my minus sign. bx over x, the x has become 1. 1 times b is just b, still equal to c. So even though I had the x in two locations, and I couldn't combine them together because they weren't like terms, I was able to factor or divide an x outside. Instead of having two x's here and here, I have one x on the outside. Now since this is x times this entire expression, to get x by itself, we're going to divide by that entire expression of a minus b. And we're going to go to the other side and divide by a minus b. Well, a minus b over a minus b becomes 1, and 1 times x is just x. And on the right-hand side, I still have c over a minus b. Since there's a 1 out here, and I distribute a 1, it doesn't change anything. I can just drop the parentheses. So starting at the original problem, solving for x, x then would equal c divided by a minus b.